Tom Fanning uh, joins us now to discuss his results, power demand, energy policy, and the move towards renewables. It's, I mean, it's February, number one, Tom. We're bearing the lead. I, I have to do things myself. You were never <laughs> on the cover of USA Today. I guess you've seen this. Chris no, Womack. No. Chris Womack, your successor, is on oh, the cover. Oh, listen, he's fabulous. He is fabulous. He deserves he's, to be on my, the cover. He deserves to be he, he time does. man he of the my, year. He was my golf partner for, for three days in a, in, a, in a tournament where we, you get to know each other pretty well when there's galleries and everybody else. But I, I love this man. And, and uh, now he, he becomes the fourth uh, black CEO in the S&P 100. And, and he points out progress being made, but a lot more to do. But it's, it's a great move. And we look forward to, we'll miss you, but we look forward to having Chris on the show uh, from time to time. Oh, he's but, fabulous. Uh, you didn't know that? You know, you I call him the... You didn't know he was. You, you didn't know he was on the cover of USA Today. Today, I did not. No, your people are worse than mine. I think in terms of. Uh, <laughs> of not I don't seeing, know. Uh, My people are they're terrific. Well, okay. Uh, I think they would have known if your next CEO was on it. Anyway, that's that's neither here nor there. But okay, so Southern Company. What what do the results reflect at this point, uh, Tom? Just a, a rebound, a looming recession, higher interest rates, inflation. What can you tell us? from your results in the last three months that shed light and as your, you know, your former role with the Atlanta Fed and everything else. Yeah, and I think it's really interesting stuff. Look, our total sales for 22 nearly doubled uh, what we thought they would be. And I think part of this reflects the new work environment, uh, but it, residential way up, commercial way up, industrial down a bit. If you exclude a plant closure, a chloralkali plant, uh, look, they were about flat. The more interesting data, I think, goes not to year-over-year year results, but to what we call momentum, essentially the first derivative of that growth rate. Uh, almost all, I think all of the top 10 industrial segments show negative momentum. So even if you had growth, the growth was slower. That does suggest what we're seeing is a little bit of a slowing in the economy. But let me give you the glass half full. That is, when you look at our economic development data, it continues to be really strong. Job growth, uh, 130% year over year. Um, capital investment, 250%. So here's what I think is happening here. I think we are going into what could be the proverbial soft landing. I think the Fed, you know, as, as much as people love to sit on the sidelines and, and opine, the, the Greek chorus of America, look, I think we're going to see a bit of a slowdown, but I don't think here in the southeast anyway we're going to see a recession. I just think it's going to slow a little bit and then come out fine. All the long-term data suggests that. Go to the long-term demographic data. We continue to see people moving into the southeast. About a percent moving in every year for the next five years is what we project. Uh, historically low unemployment. Uh, you know, I think EVs has been a big story here. Last thing, you guys did a great piece last year with Visa talking about uh, uh, people moving to Atlanta because of technology, engineering, and innovation hires, particularly in diverse communities. Mm -hmm. You know, Southern Company and Apple have invested significantly in our building something called the Propel Center. This is something it's going to be located at HBCUs. It will develop, I think, a critical mass, an engine for uh, continuing to build this for the future. Look, I think all the right pieces are in place for the Southeast to outpace the United States broadly well, let's uh, and continue broaden to grow. This, broaden this out a little, because you, you've been there for a long time. You have steered Southern Company in, into the future. And you're the second biggest utility. You provide power you, to the grid and everything else. You see the ongoing debate about ESG and about reaching zero uh, carbon levels. And, and uh, you know, renewables are great, but, but they're a ways off. And we need a bridge uh, to the future. So how have you structured? You haven't built a nuclear plant. Do you wish you could have, uh, Tom? Or, or do you think we, we should? Or, you did build one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are building one. In fact, uh, you know, we're projecting... Uh, the first unit be in service in the second quarter, and the next unit maybe the end of this year, potentially into the first. What else quarter should we be doing? But Natural gas, c c clean coal. How do we how do we supply the energy needs of the world uh, in, in a responsible way, Tom? What, what's your solution? 
Yeah, man. Look, uh, you know, I'm an old finance guy. I believe every option has value, even if it's out of the money in the future it, it, today. So, look, we need all the arrows in the quiver, all the above. So, uh, natural gas has been a terrific boon for the United States economy. Let's unleash the uh, power of natural gas and get that going. We'll be able to manage the carbon effluence from that in the future through increased technology and all that. We need to continue with nuclear. Um, renewables certainly have their place, but they also have their drawbacks.